Principles of Symmetrical Components, Part 3E. In Part 3E, we're going to use some of the concepts of symmetrical components that we learned in the previous tutorial. And we're going to take positive sequence component, negative sequence component, and zero sequence components and add them up to see if we get our original phaser. Before we get into it, we should really understand exactly what we're dealing with, okay? What we have here is an unbalanced set of three phases. Phase A current, right? We'll call this current. Phase A current is the red phaser. Phase B current is the yellow phaser. And phase C current is the blue phasers. So if all three phasers were rotating in the counterclockwise direction, it would make an A, B, C phase sequence, okay? But as you can see, this is an unbalanced set because the magnitude of all three phases do not equal one another and the angle displacement between the phasers are not 120 degrees. So this is an unbalanced set. And because this is an unbalanced set, if we take the symmetrical components of this unbalanced set, we're going to get positive sequence component, negative sequence component, and zero sequence component. But in this tutorial, we're going to take these positive, negative, and zero sequence component as they are given, and we're going to use the concepts that we've learned to see if we can mathematically represent these symmetrical components back into the original system phaser. Okay, so that's our goal. We're going to take positive, negative, zero sequence component and see if we can represent the original phaser through mathematics. Okay, so let's get started. So first, let's define our symmetrical component phasers. And we're going to say that the positive sequence component, I positive sequence component for phaser A, that is equal to 1.27, right, which is this guy right here, 1.27 at the angle of 72.1 degrees. An angle of 72.1 degrees. Okay, so now we've defined IA, positive sequence component for phase A. Now we have to do the same thing for phase B. So we know that the positive sequence component for phase B, which is this guy right here, that is equal to 1.27 at the angle of negative 47.9 degrees. And then lastly, the positive sequence component for phase C current is equal to 1.27 at the angle of negative 167.9 degrees. So now we've defined the positive sequence component. Now let's define the negative sequence component. So we're gonna scroll down a little bit. Let's zoom out. Okay, so now we're dealing with the negative sequence component. So the negative sequence component of phase A, which is the red, so that is equal to 0 0.64 at 44.1 degrees. So let's go back in here. So we're gonna say it's 0 0.64 at 44.1 degrees. And then for simplicity, let's just copy that below so we're not retyping everything. So for phase B, now phase B was this one right here, that is equal to same magnitude, but at negative 75.1 degrees, negative 75.1 degrees. And this is for phase B, okay? And then for phase C, which is a yellow, same magnitude, but it's at 164.1 degrees. So phase C, 64.1 degrees, awesome. Now, lastly, let's do the same thing for zero sequence component. So for zero sequence component, zero A, we know that phase A, phase B, and phase C all have the same magnitude and they all have the same angle. Uh, and the reason why we can't see the other two phases here and the reason why we only have this one line is because all three phases overlap each other. So for the zero sequence component, all three phases are 0.53 at negative 57.9 degrees. So that's what we're gonna write. So 0.53 at negative 57.9 degrees. Okay, so before we go on to the next page, let's audit some of our values and make sure we have everything correct because if it's not correct, then it's gonna cause more problems later on. So positive sequence phase A component is 1.27 right here at 72.1 degrees, which is right. 
uh, for phase B is 1.27 at negative 47.9 degrees, which is okay. And then for phase C is 1.27 at negative 167.9 degrees, which is cool. Right, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. For negative sequence component, phase A, which is the red, is 0.64 at 44.1 degrees, which is what we have here. That's good. For phase B, phase B was a yellow, it's 0.64 at 164.1 degrees, and oh no, we have we have a mistake here. So, and then, okay, so this right here is actually 164.1 degrees. So phase B, which is the yellow, is 164.1 degrees, um, and it's not negative, it's positive. And then for phase C, which is the blue, it's 0.64 at negative 75.9 degrees. So phase C is negative 75.9 degrees. Okay, and then our zero sequence components, 0.53 at negative 57.9 degrees, 0.53 at negative 57.9 degrees. Okay, so we're looking good now. As you can see, I had made a rookie mistake of, of swapping phase B and C for negative sequence component. So now let's go on to the second page and start doing our mathematics and make and see if we can get our original phaser. So let's copy this guy into our second page so we don't have to scroll back and forth. We could increase the size of this. Okay, so remember that the red phaser was phase A. In the previous tutorial, we've said that the system phase A phaser is equal to the phase A positive sequence component plus phase A negative sequence component plus phase A zero sequence component, right? Well, let's see if that works out. So the system phaser, right, that is equal to positive sequence component for phase A, the negative sequence component for phase A, and the zero sequence component for phase A. Let's see if it works. And we have to change the format. And there you have it, 1.653 at 46.8 degrees. Which is great because we know that if we add a positive sequence component, negative sequence component, zero sequence component, we get the original phaser. Awesome, okay, so this is great. Now let's do IB. So IB is equal to the positive sequence component for phase B plus the negative sequence component for phase B plus the zero sequence component for phase B and let's see if it equals our original phaser and there you have it remember we said that phase B was a yellow phaser 1.32 at negative 67 degrees and that's what we have here okay this is looking great now the original phase C system phaser is equal to positive sequence component of phase C plus the negative sequence component of phase C plus the zero sequence component of phase C and that is equal to 1.56 at negative 121 degrees 1.56 at negative 121 degrees and that equals our original system phaser so we just use some of the mathematics to equate our original phaser, right? Now, this is just one way of equating the original phaser with the symmetrical component breakdowns. Let's investigate another way. So let's define our A operator. So let's say that our A operator is equal to one at the angle of 120 degrees, okay? Which means that A superscript or A squared that is equal to 1 at negative 120 degrees. So don't get confused. This is exactly how we've defined it in the past. So we're going to calculate the original phaser A, but we're using the second method. And that is equal to, well, we're going to put zero sequence component first, right? So zero sequence component of phase A plus the positive sequence component of phase A plus the negative sequence component of phase A. And that is equal to our original phaser right which makes sense because it equals that now we're saying ib uh, original phaser using the second method is equal to i zero b plus now we're going to use i one a so here we have to use the positive sequence component for phase b right 
which is sorry which is this guy right here the yellow so the positive sequence component for phase b is yellow we have to use that but instead we're going to take advantage of the a operators and take the phase a positive sequence and just rotate that 120 degrees in the counterclockwise direction or rotate that 240 degrees in the clockwise direction so we're going to take ia and we're going to multiply that by a superscript 2 okay and then for the negative sequence component which is this guy here we have to use i phase b right we have to use phase b which is the yellow right but instead of using phase b explicitly let's use it implicitly by taking phase a and then rotating that 120 degrees in the clockwise direction so we're going to take i negative sequence component of a and then we're just going to rotate that in 120 degrees in a clockwise direction and let's see if we get our original phaser and there you have it so 1.322 at negative 66.94 degrees and remember that this was our original phaser look at here it's 1.32 at negative 67 degrees so we do in fact get our original phasers by simply using these a operators instead so now let's do the same thing with the ic original phaser so now we're gonna have so ic original phaser second method is equal to the zero sequence component of ic plus by the way before we continue this notice that if i change the zero sequence component here to just a will get the same answer because the zero sequence components are all equal to each other and they have the same phase angle so similarly we could represent this as phase a zero sequence component okay now the positive sequence component now we have to use phase c right so phase c was the blue so now we can take phase a and then we can rotate that 120 degrees to make it equal phase c so we'll take ia positive sequence component for phase a and then we'll rotate that by the a operator and then similarly for negative sequence component so here's the negative sequence component here's phase c remember blue was phase c we're going to take the negative sequence component and then rotate that 240 degrees in the counterclockwise direction to represent phase C. Or we can take phase A and we can rotate it negative 120 degrees in the clockwise direction and we'll get the same phaser. Okay, so essentially what we're saying is we have to use A squared operator or A superscript 2 operator. And let's see if we get the same answer. So phase C which is the blue 1.56 at negative 121 degrees 1.56 at negative 121 degrees and that all makes sense right so this we got the same answer using the second method which is great okay now let's use this third method now the third method is a lot easier and what we're going to do is we're going to use the matrix form okay so here's the matrix form so we're going to add in uh, 1 by 3 matrix here, right? And we're going to say that that is equal to another matrix that's 3 by 3. And that is multiplied by another matrix that's 1 by 3. So we're going to put in IA. Now this is the third method, right? IB and IC. And then in here, we plug in our matrices that we've developed in the past so we know that this is a superscript 2 this is a this is a and this is a superscript 2 right and then we plug in our reference symmetrical component for phase a which is the positive sequence component for phase a the negative sequence component for phase a and the zero sequence component for phase a and let's see if that matches what our original answers were so we'll convert that here is the third method so um, the original phaser for phase a 1.653 at 45 about 46 degrees right here which makes sense for phase b 1.32 1.32 at 53 degrees all right, we have a problem. Okay, we have a problem. So what is our problem? I think I know what our problem is. 
So remember when we define this third column here, it's very, very important to put the zero sequence component first. Okay, the zero sequence component goes in first and then it's the positive sequence component and the negative sequence component. Okay, so zero sequence component goes in first, then positive, then negative, right? Uh, if we want to use a positive first and the negative second and the zero third, then we have to rearrange this matrix here. So um, this, this form right here is specifically for zero sequence component being first, then the positive sequence being second, and the negative sequence being third. And once we've done that, look what happens. So for phase A is 1.653 at 46.8 degrees, which is which makes sense. For phase B is 1.32, 1.32 at negative 66.9 degrees or 67 degrees. And then for phase C, it's 1.5 six at negative 121 degrees so phase c is 1.56 at negative 121 degrees so in this tutorial though it was very long we've went through multiple methods to mathematically calculate our original phaser using symmetrical components and this concludes the part three session in part four we're going to work backwards to look at Okay, so if we had this original phaser and it was unbalanced, how can we calculate the positive and negative and zero sequence component from this unbalanced set, right? In this, in part three, we focused on, okay, we have positive, negative, zero sequence component. How do we calculate the system symmetrical component? In part four, we have the system symmetrical component. How do we calculate the positive, negative, and zero sequence components like that? This video was brought to you by generalpack.com, making power system protection, automation, and controls intuitive. Please visit generalpack.com for more power systems video tutorials similar to this one. And subscribe to this channel. Thank you.